connecting, 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 connecting. Wow, it's weird it's not to go. There we go. There we go. All right, we're live. You guys ready for this? Welcome to an episode very special. Today we are talking about images that make statements, statement photographs, photographs that are so impactful. photographs, sorry that I was muted there, photographs that have left you speechless, a photograph that captures a moment in history. Let's go. Thanks for the subscription. A photograph that captures a moment in history so powerfully that it becomes a symbol of an entire movement or moment in history. These photographs are called statement photographs and they have the ability to change the world. Today's episode, we're exploring the power of a statement photograph and what that means and what makes them so impactful. From Dorothea Lang's migrant mother to Nick Ute's napalm girl, today we're gonna have a look at some of the most iconic statement photographs in history and explore how they continue to shape our understanding of the world today. Today, we are examining the roles of composition, of subject matter, and cultural significance in the creation of these incredible, powerful images. You'll come away today with a deep appreciation of the art of photography and all the ways in which it can shape our understanding of the world. So today, let's dive in. We're gonna explore the world of statement photographs. Thank you everybody who's tuned in. Thank you everybody who's found me through all the different social medias. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out for me today, hanging out with me today. And um, if you're watching this after the fact, thank you. I appreciate you for finding this. Statement photographs are important to the world of photography because they have the power to communicate important social, political, and cultural messages in a way that words alone cannot. These photographs capture a moment in time that can tell a story, that can evoke emotion, and that can evoke change. They're often able to transcend cultural and linguistic barriers, making them a universal language that can be understood by people all over the world. Here are some very well-known statement photographs and why literally 
these statement photographs you guys are going to know and recognize. We're starting with Dorothea Lang. Dorothea Lang is a photographer that we all should be very aware of. Migrant mother. This photograph was taken during the Great Depression. It's a very powerful symbol of poverty and the struggle in America. The woman depicted is Florence Owens Thompson. She's a mother of seven who was living in a tent with her children when Lane came across her. The photograph is widely regarded as one of the most important images of the 20th century and has been reproduced in countless publications and exhibitions. It serves as a reminder of the hardships that many Americans faced during this time and the adversity. This image has become a symbol of resilience and strength. It's kind of crazy, Dorothea Lange the first photographer on this list. Hope you guys are feeling it. Photographer number two, Nick Oot or Ute. Napalm Girl by Nick Oot. This photograph was taken during the Vietnam War. It shows a young girl named Kim Phuc running naked or Phuc running naked down a road after a napalm attack. The image is a visceral depiction of the horrors of war and has become a symbol of the anti-war movement. It helped galvanize public opinion against the war and is often credited with helping bringing about the war's end. Today, this photograph serves as a reminder of the cost of human war and the importance of peace. These are some other photographs I'm sharing from photographer Nick Oot. <sighs> Afghan girl. When I say Afghan girl, I know you know the photograph I'm speaking about. Steve McCurry. Steve McCurry is a National Geographic photographer this photograph oops there it is taken in a refugee camp in pakistan during the soviet afghan war shows a beautiful young girl with piercing green eyes the image became famous after it was featured on the cover of national geographic in 85 and has since become one of the most recognizable and iconic photographs in the world the photograph has been credited with humanizing the Afghanistan people and, help, and helping to raise awareness of the plight of refugees around the world. It's also served as a symbol of the power of photography to connect people across cultures and bridge the gap between the West and the developing world. This is... Steve McCurry also went on a quest to find the Afghan girl 20 plus years after the fact, this is another photograph that he made of her. This is another photograph he made in the village at that time. And he did find her. And this is her holding that original cover. National Geographic made a movie called Search for the Afghan Girl. These are just a few examples of the power of statement photographs and how they, com how they communicate important messages and how they make an incredibly lasting impact on the world. All right, let's get into photo anatomy. In this segment, we're going to talk about the importance of composition in statement photographs. Composition is how we show statement photographs. How, composition is how we show power. While subject matter obviously is very important, how it's composed can have a significant impact on the image's ability to convey a message. Photographer I've chosen to show you for this section, his name is Platon. And Platon, Platon has shot more covers than 
I mean, this is just a small selection of his covers, but Platten makes statement photographs. He makes the kind of photographs that stop you dead in your tracks. And that's why his photography works so well in covers. The eye con <clears throat> excuse me, the eye contact, the light, all your focus is right here. And I think that Platten has statement photography on lock. Composition is essentially the arrangement of visual elements in a photograph. It involves making decisions about where to place the subject, how to frame the shot, and what to include in the background. Statement photographs, the composition is deliberate and purposeful, designed to convey a specific message and emotion. One key aspect of composition with statement photographs is the use of framing. And you can see how Platten frames his subjects, how his subjects are placed within the photograph. By using different framing techniques, photographers can create emotional effects. The close-up shot of a subject's face can create a sense of intimacy or vulnerability, while a wide shot can convey a sense of vastness or isolation. Another secret aspect of composition with statement photographs is the use of visual elements, color, contrast, lines. A photograph that uses strong contrasting lines and color can create a sense of tension or conflict, while a photograph that uses soft muted colors can convey a feeling of serenity or calm. S the use of diagonal lines in a photograph can create a sense of movement, of dynamicism, while vertical lines can create a sense of stability and strength. Another amazing, amazing example of the importance of composition in photographs is a very, very famous, famous photograph by a photographer named Jeff Widener. Jeff Widener made a photograph called Tank Man. And this photograph taken during the Tenement Square protests in 1989 shows a man standing in front of a line of tanks. The composition of the photograph is crucial to the impact. The leading line, the uh, gun turrets, the scale of this man versus the scale of these tanks, all of these arrows facing forward, telling us that these tanks want to go forward, but they are being stopped by this man. The composition of this photograph is so crucial to its impact. The use of framing creates a sense of the man's vulnerability and the tank's overwhelming power. The stark contrast between the man's vulnerability and his white shirt and the tank's dark metal creates a powerful visual contrast. The photograph's composition is so powerful that it becomes a symbol of peaceful resistance against oppression, and it remains one of the most powerful photographs of the 20th century. Composition always plays a vital role in the creation of statement photographs. By using framing, visual elements, and obviously photography, <laughs> Photographers can create images that are emotionally powerful to communicate these important messages. Understanding the importance of composition is key to creating statement photographs that have a lasting impact on viewers. Now, I think it's important for me to also share with you 
contemporary photographers that are doing big things with statement photographs. I think that it's super important to share with you big people who are doing important things with statement photographs. This contemporary photographer that I'm going to show you right now is speaking about issues that are happening in the world today. Her name is Latoya Ruby Fraser. Now, she deals with, she's an American photographer. She uses her work to explore issues. This is her, the photographer. She uses her work to explore issues of race, poverty, and healthcare in the United States. Her photographs document the lives and experiences of marginalized communities and challenge mainstream narratives. I'm really, really feeling the depth to her photographs. Let's start with the hand here. Let's start with the pictures here. There's so many things to look at. The note here, the leading line, which then brings your eye into this child, her reflection, the reflection of the photographer taking the photo, and then this woman's back. The clear baskets here, which allow you to see through the jewelry box, the bottles here. There's so much eye candy in Latoya's photographs that they leave me kind of speechless. And that's the whole vibe about today's episode is photographs that stop you in your tracks, photographs that speak without words. Stop the violence, increase the education and the peace. The depth, look at the the stuff on the floor, the pill bottles, the dirt on the floor, the slippers, the boxes. This is real life. She documents real life in an incredible way. We're looking at the work right now of Latoya Ruby Fraser. Another photographer. Her name is Zanelle Maholi. Maholi. Zanelle Maholi. Zanelle is a South African artist, we're going to call her, whose work focuses on the experiences of LGBTQ communities in South Africa. This is the photographer. Their photographs challenge stereotypes and confront discrimination while providing a platform for LGBTQ voices. The work, I, I'm so happy with this collection of photographs that I put together today to show you. Attire as a crown. These look like steering wheel covers around her body. These are self-portraits and I feel profound. Another incredible self-portrait double exposure. Do let me know what you feel of this work chat. I'm hoping that you're feeling. We're looking at the work of Zanelle Maholi, South African photographer. Very very close to being the photographer that I chose for today's thumbnail. Look at this work. Are you guys not blown away? Yes or yes, right? Are you feeling it? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> like the A clamps. <laughs> These are everything, the rope and just the black face. She overpaints her face in black, the rope tied around her neck. She's just making statement photographs. She's making a statement here without saying a word. I hope you guys are feeling it. Super, super dope. Let me know uh, with a like, by the way, the more likes that I get on this video, the more people who see it. So do me a favor, tap the like button, leave a comment if you like what you're seeing and you're feeling the stuff that we're talking about today. Another amazing photographer, French photographer, artist. His name is JR. 
And JR is known for creating large scale public artworks. This is the photographer and he addresses social issues. His work often involves photographing people from different communities and cultures and pasting their portraits in public spaces. His most famous project, which is what we're looking at right now, is called Women Are Heroes, and it documents the experiences of women in conflict zones. And he challenges the idea that women are passive victims in war. He shoots these amazing close-ups and then posts them in the Fuzelas in Brazil. This is a up close portrait of JR in one of these powerful women's eyes. Look at the installations of these photographs. I participated in a JR challenge, which was called the Inside Out Project, where photographers from all over the world shot close up portraits and then made wheat paste of them and pasted them up all over cities around the world. I participated with that here, posted Pharrell pictures, cycling pictures, portraits, and um, yeah, they went up everywhere. So the Inside Out project is something that ha I, I feel very close to. I feel like it's an incredibly powerful statement and that's what today is all about, statement photographs. Today's most incredible statement photographer that I'm profiling is a photographer that you guys should all know. If you don't know this photographer, I'm so proud to be the one that is introducing this shooter to you today. This photographer, whew, I'm just sorry, I just need to reorder this one photo there. There we go. This photographer, Sebastian Salgadio. Sebastio Salgado, Sebastian Salgado. <sighs> He's known for his documentary work and he addresses social issues of social justice and environmental degradation. This is obviously Sebastio. His photographs, do his photographs document the lives of people around the world people who are impacted with issues such as poverty, war, famine, as well as the impact of human activities on the natural world. Salgado's work not only is a document of human experience, but it's also a call to action. He's inspiring viewers to consider their own role in addressing these issues. Look at Sebastian's photos. Salgado, like this, as you take in this horse photo, you notice how skinny this horse is and how malnourished. You can see his ribs. You can see this horse has next to no muscle tone. These details and just how Salgado uses this archway, this patch of light here essentially to draw your eye here he uses textural elements to bring you into looking at the pain that is this horse this is more recent work in the amazon rainforest you can just see the quality of light and his framing how he frames these people here, you can see where the gutter of the magazine is and how they're all looking into the Amazon. It's incredibly powerful, hopefully very inspirational for you guys, my viewers, because I know the type of work that you shoot and I hope that you feel that Salgado is a, a great one to go out on. You know, these, these photographs just moved me and I chose to pick a selection of Salgado photos that they just have such heart. Look at this detail here. The vibes with the arms, the passion in his mouth, that this man looking at him 
the how the river molds this man how he uses his arms for leading line to bring you back into the photograph how he uses these branches the light area back here to focus you back on this subject i just think that it's spectacular and i hope you guys do as well statement photographs have significant cultural and historical significance contemporary photographers continue to create powerful images that speak to these important issues that our world faces today. And through their work, these photographers inspire change, they start conversations, and they document important events, ensuring that these issues are not forgotten by future generations. As we look at these last few images, by Salgado. I hope you guys are inspired today. I hope you guys are inspired by the power of the statement photograph. <laughs> hey, it's always nice to get people who are feeling my content. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Salgado, he just makes me, this is such a famous flick, such a famous photograph, but he just makes me sing. You know, look, what am I looking at? Are you seeing this photography? Selgado is a master, a master. The quality of light is just, yes, absolutely. That was Kuwait. The quality of light is, ah, uh, and today's thumbnail, the photograph that stopped me in my tracks and i hope it's the photograph that stopped you let's go clocks i'm glad you're here click this is the photograph that stopped me today it was the photograph that i knew i had to make as my thumbnail i knew today you know i'm gonna share a collection of photographs <clears throat> excuse me that are so powerful that are so like right here that you actually feel moved after you see them. I felt the collection, I, I think that it's necessary to just show big pictures, big photographs, moving photographs. And you know, we all have the ability to make these kinds of photographs. We all have the ability. By the way, everybody who's tuned in has found me through being live on Instagram. Thank you for doing the crossover. I appreciate you. Know that um, being live here and doing this show is something that I've been doing for the last two years. And the growth of this program mentoring emerging photographers helping photographers get to the next level that's what i do and i've been trying hard for a while to grow this channel and it's working i know it's working because of my numbers i know it's working because of my numbers it says so right there and um Thank you, everybody who's taken the time to tune in, anybody who's taken the time to tune in, whether you've jumped in here today, whether you've seen me before and you're a regular, or if you've never watched me live, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do it today. It means everything to me. I appreciate you. All right, let's get into essentials. We'll call this essentials. All right. So do you need specific gear when it comes to making statement photographs? It's easy to get caught up thinking you need the best camera, you need the best lenses, you need other high end equipment in order to, to create a powerful image. Guess what? You don't. You don't need expensive stuff. The truth is idea, the idea behind the photograph is way more important than the gear that you use in order to capture it. In fact, many of the most iconic, impactful photographs in history were shot 
with basic gear. So don't get wrapped up in the equipment. Don't get wrapped up in the camera equipment. Obviously having good gear is important and certainly will help you make high quality images, but it is more important to realize that gear does not make photographs. I promise you this, oops, this camera here has taken exactly zero photographs without me. Zero. It takes none. Look, it sits here. Without the operator, a camera is just a paperweight. It's literally a tool. It takes a skilled operator and a camera and an idea in order to execute a photograph and make a statement photographs. Great ideas, perspective, a strong understanding of the topic that you're photographing. That's what truly makes a statement photograph. Obviously, that being said, there's essential pieces of gear that can help you capture the best possible images. A reliable camera, lens, obviously, a tripod, sometimes. Now, for people who watch me or know my work, I shoot with a tripod half the time, like say 50%, like saying every other shoot, that's a high ratio of times that I use a tripod versus not. The reason? Sharpness. I'm insane when it comes to how sharp I want my images to be. How you achieve that sharpness is by stabilization. So reliable camera, lenses, tripod, and perhaps lighting if you're shooting in a lower light situation. But no, the most powerful statement photographs are made with environmental light or natural light. More important than any of these physical items is the ability to think critically about the issues that you're addressing with your photography. Having a clear understanding of the social, political, and cultural context in which you're photographing is essential for creating Photographs that make a statement and really resonate with viewers by focusing on your ideas, your perspective, and using your gear as a tool rather than the end goal, you can now create powerful statement photographs that capture an essence, the essence of the issues that you're addressing. Remember, a strong idea and a fresh perspective are the most important ingredients for creating impactful and meaningful statement photographs. Remember, it's very, very important. Hope you guys are enjoying today's show. I am hot, hot, hot because I'm wearing a toque. I'm wearing my merch, by the way. Hey, ah, choo! You call yourself a photographer. Look how you're dressed. Yes, you. You just wear track pants, t-shirt. If you're gonna wear track pants and a t-shirt, at least look fly like me. Here, take this. Right? How fly do you look now? If you guys wanna get the flyest apparel for creatives and photographers, you gotta tune into that merch store. There it is. Look at, I have over a hundred items spread between two merch stores, limited edition drops. Every video that you watch on YouTube, as well as on all my channel pages, you'll see the links for my merch store. Make sure that you guys jump in there and look fly like I do when you're shooting. Let's get it on. Beyond the power of individual images, statement photographs have significant cultural and historic value. Statement photographs document events, issues, and movements that have shaped our society, and they serve as important records of social, political, and environmental change. 
Iconic photographs have become visual shorthand for major events and movements. You remember Tank Man that I just showed you from Tiananmen Square or the young girl fleeing a napalm attack during the Vietnam War? Those images have transcended their original context and have become symbols of resistance, courage, and human suffering. In contemporary times, photographers continue to capture powerful images that document and shape cultural conversations. You remember the Black Lives Matter movement and how it was documented by photographers all over the world. They captured the protests, the aftermath of the police brutality and the resilience of the black communities. During Black History Month, we have to think of all the things that have happened, all the protests, all the resistance and the photographers that have brought those images to us. By capturing and sharing these moments, these moments, us, the photographers, we're helping to raise awareness and create empathy and understanding for complex issues. They also challenge societal norms and provide a visual record for marginalized and forgotten communities. This month's theme, you guys know, is perspective. And statement photographs are a very powerful way for us, the photographers, to create images that communicate important messages and bring attention to super critical issues. Whether we're documenting a social movement or telling a story of a marginalized community, exploring environmental issues, many of my viewers do all of these things, which is so amazing. And I'm so thankful for you guys watching and supporting this show, supporting this podcast. Know that statement photographs can, can, can literally, let me try that again. Statement photographs can provide a platform for voices and experiences that are often overlooked. Now, I want you guys to create your own statement photographs. But before you do, I want you to consider these tips. I want you to choose a topic that speaks to you. Think about what you're passionate about. Think about the issues that you actually care about. This is gonna help you create a photograph that is emotionally impactful. Oh, I got something in my eyeball. I want you to also think about your composition. Think how you can use visual elements like lighting, color, and framing to enhance your message. Also, we have our own biases. So you have to be aware of your own bias and how they might affect the photograph that you're trying to take. If that photograph has a message, how is your bias spinning this photograph that you're taking? How can you approach your subject matter in a way that's fair and respectful and accurate? You also have to engage with your subject. Shooting subjects is what you guys are going to have to do for me in order to create these powerful photographs. Building relationship with your subject can help you create a more authentic and powerful image. You have to take time to listen. Being a photographer, it's not just taking photographs, you're making stories. So you have to listen. And listening is such an important part of how I make portraits. People ask me, how do I make photographs that actually convey emotion and make people actually feel the subject that they're looking at? How do I do that? It's simple. I do that by listening. I actually pay attention. I listen more than I shoot. And I think that it's most important as a photographer to listen, engaging with your subject, feeling your subject so your subject can feel you, makes it so you can create the kind of photographs that are iconic, that are timeless, that, 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 
move people. The whole goal of photography is making a statement without words. We are trying to convey so much in such a short time. The average photograph is looked at for less than three seconds. So <clears throat> if we have less than three seconds to grab somebody, what are we going to do in less than three seconds to grab someone's attention with our pictures? Following these tips, us as photographers, we can create statements that have the potential to make a very significant human impact. Whether we're trying to raise awareness, whether we're trying to spark a conversation, whether we're trying to inspire action, statement photographs are a powerful tool for communication and social change. I'm an editorial photographer, so I shoot in a different way, but my aims are also to create socially iconic photographs, photographs that are timeless. I'm documenting the faces of today's generation. And I think about that when I make my photographs, all of my photographs, I'm trying to make statement photographs. And I really think that you guys should too. All right. I am here for questions, comments, and accolades. You know I'm bringing the smoke. I always bring the smoke when it comes to these shows. I'm trying to bring the smoke, so we bring in the smoke. I hope you guys are feeling it. Every week, I get submissions from photographers all over the world. They send me photographs. They want my opinion. They want my reviews. They want my input, my insight on their photos. So today's no different. Today is no different. Today we are looking at photographs. I will call out the photographers that we are looking at. I will, Whew. why is my mouse over there? Let's go. There we go. I will call out every photographer that we're looking at. We're going to talk about their work. I'm going to critique them. All right. We are starting with the weekly challenge photos with our photographer. They call him Turtle. You are about to watch real photo reviews. You guys ready? Let's get it on. All right. Our first photographer, Turtle, tell the class where you're from. Our first photographer did one of my many challenges. This challenge that Turtle chose to do is called 100 photos, where you shoot 100 photos of a person, place, or thing, and then you tell me what your favorite photograph was in number, and you share that, but also share with me the first frame you took and the last frame you took. What this exercise does is it teaches you how to shoot through the picture and teaches you how to shoot photographs from every possible angle and also know that if you shoot one frame it's impossible for you to get that amazing frame that you're getting at frame 100 and also if you shoot one frame you won't get that shot that is magic that usually lives somewhere between 50 and 100 so Shooting through the picture was the exercise. Turtle is the photographer. Turtle has submitted first photo, 100th photo, and the 46th, which he says is his favorite. Let's do a review. This is Turtle's first. Oops, let's enlarge and open original. This is Turtle's first photo. Turtle, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I like how you've you've done the thing that I asked for, which was to show power. You definitely are showing power from a low angle. What I would love is for you to be further back because you're clipping your hands, you're clipping your arms. I know you're also probably holding the remote and not wanting to show it but I feel like you're aiming up almost too much because you're seeing like 
chest more so than I think this part of your body, which like radiates energy, you could have compensated a little bit by looking down a little bit more at the camera. I think that could have would have helped. Lightwise, I like the direction that the light is coming from, although no, it's coming from this side, my bad. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. We got bright area here, but the way that the shadow patterns were here, it's messing with my eyes. But um, the light is coming from this direction. Obviously, you can see this side of his face is lit. Under his arms are not lit. This back arm is not lit. I like it. It's powerful. It feels like something. You definitely nailed cover composition, Turtle. So... I like that. I'm going to look at another photo from Turtle because this was your first frame and I know it usually gets better. Let's look at your 100th frame. By the way, guys, if you'd like to submit photographs for review, all you need to do is join my Discord. You'll find the link for my Discord in the video that you're watching. It's also in my about section, on my header, in the video description, like it's everywhere. Let's look at Turtle's 100th photograph. This photo I like, I like very much. I like the headspace. You can see how this would look if it was a cover. I'm just gonna make it a cover. It, it's good composition, Turtle. I like this. I like how you're offset. You being offset is really strong. I, I think it's stronger with you being here. The leading line of your foot and how that brings you into the picture. Also the angle of your head and how that brings you this way. Um, we're live, by the way, on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can see here how your head and the head angle, I actually like it. And now you have great texture here, which you're using to frame you. For me, Turtle, this is an 11 out of 10. I like this a lot. I don't mind seeing the remote. Things to consider, it's your skin is a little blue. Um, your skin's blue, so that's color balance. So I would definitely work on getting a neutral color. You have a neutral color here in your pants. So use this neutral color to pull the color balance. It needs to be a little warmer. Once it's a little bit more warm, um, that blue that's kicking off your shirt and reflecting in your face won't be as predominant. I think that you'll find um, you look a little bit um, more oomph. And also, it'll work in black and white. Um, Turtle, this wins. You should be very happy with this photograph. This is photograph 100. Now we're going to look at your favorite, like what you chose as your favorite, which was photo 46. For me, this photo, Turtle, what's the first thing that you see, chat, when you guys are looking at this photo? What's the first thing that you guys see? The first thing that I see is blue, right? Now, remember, um, and green, and remember that these pants are gray, right? So color balance is the thing that you have to do first. Know that um, drone and the small sensor, like it, um, it really um, shifts color balance a lot. You have to shoot raw if you can on your drone which i'm sure that you can and then afterwards color balance that so it's neutral if i show you now the other photo oh my god dude look at your pants so look at how different the color balance is dude for me it's i can't get past it i can't get past the color balance the crop is cool um it as a cover is okay um the block of wood right behind your head is a little distracting again i know you're doing these selfies with a drone but if you look at this here and this pile and how you have stuff growing out of your head the bush that you're in front of actually frames you so it's quite good but 
I would have offset this this way and put you this way. So you're composed somewhere within that frame. I would have skied the drone a little bit higher. And again, color balance. Color balance has to be a priority for you. Think about color balance. And also, is this better in black and white? is this a better black and white photo than color? That's also a question that you have to ask yourself when this blue is so bold. The reason that you see photographers, creatives, people who are on sets, we always wear black. The reason that none of my merch really is a color is because creatives always wear black. We always wear black, white, or gray. It's like neutral. We, we like to blend in any scenario that you put us in. So wearing a bold blue um, in a photograph, I see the t-shirt before I see anything. I see the t-shirt. So unless you're selling that t-shirt, it's sometimes better to be understated. And also um, colors come in and out of fashion. So black is always in fashion. I would think to like try to if you're in photos just think about more neutral colors turtle guys that is three photographs from turtle but turtle i have news for you my guy this isn't your best photo of these three if i was choosing one two or three what do you guys think is the best photo three two or one keeping in mind that three is what turtle chose for me, it's not three, it's number two. This is a way stronger. Alexandra, I 100% agree. Everybody's going to say it's the second one, right? Everybody's saying it's the second photo because it's the second photo. It's sometimes helpful to have other people look at your work and give you that kind of, uh, that kind of an insight, but Turtle, for submitting, for going through this process. You know, my guy, you get nothing but love. I got all the love for you. Thank you for submitting your photographs for review, my guy. I appreciate you. <laughs> photographs from Turtle. Let's go. High quality content. You guys ready for more? All right, let's see who else we got. That is photography from Josh McCoy. We call him Turtle. Julie says, for this week's challenge, make your subject look powerful. I decided to share a portrait session I did with my university fat friend back in Kiev. We shot at St. Sophia Cathedral, 12th century, and the session was inspired by the princesses of Kiev rush so the shot the shots kind of fit in this challenge too shot with the 6d canon 50 millimeter 1.8 so she's she's sharing three photos um oh julie this is good work good work guys you know julie is one of my assistants I'm incredibly um, hard on the people who work for me because um, the level of photography that I expect from them is very high. And if they miss the bar, I call them on it. So Julie, Julie hit the bar. Are you guys ready for some photographs from Miss Lagovska? Let's go, Julie. I think you did a great job here, girl. Let's go. So the assignment was to show power in photographs. I think the stance you did like almost a royal photograph. It's almost a royal photograph of this girl, Julie. I think that I think that you did a good job. I think the smile is what takes it from powerful to sweet like it leaves a powerful and it kind of enters into sweet because she has a bit of a smile if it was a little bit more of a mona lisa smile like a little bit more understated julie says with the cotton in her hands it's a powerful symbol 
uh, for Ukraine, which is amazing. I love the framing that you're using with this neckline, the tone of the brown. I also, again, you have limited control over what people are wearing. I would love this brown to be a little bit more neutral, um, preferably black. If you look at what this color looks like against this background, and imagine now if it was all, if all of this down here was this color, then it's really pushing your eye to the cotton because of the contrast of the color of the cotton versus this and her skin, right? Like that's just first inkling is I, I would have had her take the sweater off. But if it's a t-shirt under here and not a long sleeve, it's inappropriate in the venue that you're shooting. You can't shoot her with crop sleeves in, in this environment, okay? So now let's talk about what's working for this photograph. The leading line of this cotton, which is bringing you up into this photo, check. The archway and how you're using a double archway to bring your eye back to her, check. The lighting, the lighting, Julie, is so on the button. Look at the close-up of this photo. Yes or yes, Julie, this is absolutely fire chat, right? You can see that she's, um, you can see that she's pulling her mouth and and that's something like it's up to us as the shooters to correct but if you look at this photo close now with um the shirt cropped out i'm gonna move my camera look at this look at this quality look at how this image feels when you're isolated just on her the next thing is that you would offset her. Unfortunately, we don't have enough um, room to offset her left or right. But also, by the way, guys, little sidebar, there's no excuses as far as gear. I'm going to remind you, Julie shoots with the original 6D, the original one from 11 years ago, okay? 20 megapixels, no eye tracking, she shoots with a $100 50 millimeter like STM lens. It's basically the most basic equipment, but because Julie really is good at applying editorial rules to her photography, because of that, she consistently makes work that um, impresses me. But also know that the critiques that I give I'm, I'm trying to take it from this, from here to the next level. What are the things that you can do to take it to the next level? When you look at this scene, the first thing that you see is her sweater. Yes or yes, right? So because of that, if we take that tone away and make that tone more monochromatic, then... Um, you, yeah, Julie's saying, and get rid of the gray right here. And yes, we can talk about that as well. That bothers me less than for me, it would be this is number one thing that bothers. This is number two. And then again, the smile is number three, because I think it should be a little bit more sullen and stark. And then also, you're shooting her very like school portrait pose. And I think if she was squared up to camera and like faced the camera more like blocky, it might be a little bit more effective, you know? All right, let's look at another photo from Julie. By the way, Julie, still, um, your photography is great. Your photography is great, but you're not trying to be great. You're trying to be fucking spectacular. Yes or yes, right? You're not trying to be good. You're trying to be fucking spectacular. Yes or yes, right? So because of that, there's no fucking around. For me, I've been shooting since I was 14. I've been literally professional for over 30 years. 
I'm just getting into the realm of feeling like, ah, I'm pretty okay. I would never say I'm great at photography. I'm just getting into the realm of being good. Helmut Newton, Helmut Newton said that he just started getting into the realm of good at 50. And he had been shooting for Vogue since he was 22. So there's no way that I'm going to say that I'm fucking great at photography. I'm literally just getting started. So for you, Julie, on the road to being a fucking spectacular photographer, you take in this and you train your eyes to be um, relentless relentless in your pursuit of perfection and you'll never reach it but the pursuit of it these corrections that i give are going to help you get to that next level let's look at another flick from julie um hey alexandra says that she wants to send in a photo she's new to this channel first of all alexandra all she needs to do is um click that link right there because my chat are super super active the first thing you're going to do join discord click this make an account blah 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 and then you'll see behind the picture at the bottom of the behind the picture section once you get into the discord it looks like this once you enter you're going to be here in the welcome screen then go down here to where you see behind the picture and drop photos right here where it says behind the picture photo drop if you put your photos right her um oops if you put your photos right here you will have 100 percent success of me looking at them because that's where i'm going next by the way alexandra i'm glad you found me I'm glad you found me. It's always great when new creatives find my channel. It's always great. And I promise you the kind of content that I give here is all about enabling emerging photographers and helping you get to the next level. So thank you for being here. Welcome. And I hope you guys learning. I hope you guys learned something today. Okay, Julie, where was I? Oh, challenge submissions. Okay, I got lost there. I, I got totally lost. Um, where where was I? Okay, weekly. Okay, Jesus Christ, I got lost. Okay, Julie, now you're starting to get it. This second photo. Um, ISO 1600 F28 60th of a second. This second photo, Julie, you're really starting to get it. This is Julie's first photo. This is her second photo. Number one, taking the hair down. The hair down is a thousand times better, Julie. A thousand times better. Yes or yes. So much better with her hair down. It now... It now shapes her chin. It now gives her, it like, she looks now like a model, right? Where before with the, with the previous photo, you can see it's too school girly. It just, it doesn't have the right feeling. This one has the right feeling. This Julie is an 11, a hundred percent. I love it. How she's holding her hands. It's respectful. The arch, the arch, the butterfly lighting. I know that you're lighting her natural light. The butterfly lighting, Julie, is impeccable. It's really, really good. Here, the sweater bothers, bothers me a little bit less, but you can still see that this block of tone and i'm going to demonstrate that by simply cropping in and showing you just this looking at just this face yes or yes right yes or yes this is something that now tonally her skin her hair the molding everything julie this is absolutely on point so because of this i i mean i'm 
I'm so proud of you, girl. Like, you're really doing a great job. Let's go. You're really doing a great job, Julie. And know that I, I can critique your photos like this because it works and you correct and you get better. I've seen your your progress over two years watching this show and it's mind bending. And the reason that you're where you are now is because you listen to the advice that I give you and I fucking push you, Julie, yes or yes. Because I push you into areas where it's not your comfort zone, you make photos and it's like you impress yourself and you wouldn't have done that shit if I didn't push you. So congratulations, Julie, you're doing a bang up job. Your photographs are a reflection of the hard work that you're doing. And um, I want you to know that I see it and the the rest of my viewers see it. Okay, Julie is coming in hard with these photographs. Now, I asked also to create photographs, to create portraits that give a feeling of power. And this is the assignment that Julie gave me. Again, for review, Julie's first photograph, Julie's second photograph. And now to look at Julie's third photograph, Look at this vibe. The crop, Julie, is everything. Like the evolution of how you cropped and framed this girl. This is so beautiful. The framing, the way that you're using the archway and kind of letting it continue off a little bit. The squared up shoulders, the head angle. There's two things. Number one, she's pulling her head back yes or yes she's she's pulling her head back she's doing this and also she's doing this thing with her mouth right she's doing something weird with her mouth because she's doing something weird with her mouth it just has like it has a bit of like a strange look so for me, again, this shot, I'm going to give it an 11, Julie. I'm going to give it an 11 because compositionally, it's just so strong. But the thing that is really killing me is, is like what she's thinking. Like literally, um, like, is she thinking I'm bored? Like what's, what is she thinking? Like people forget that how our muscles pull here and how our muscles pull around our mouth, it makes it so we can read people's minds. So if you look at this close up, it's so beautiful, the hair, the light, but you can see she's pulling, she's pulling back just a little bit and there's a little bit of a mouth thing julie says she has inspiration for this photo vicky says that this one is her favorite this one is her favorite out of all of them julie said that she's going to drop the inspo photo so we're going to pull that there could be yeah i definitely i definitely see how this would be the inspiration julie this is julie's ref reference i mean it's it's uh an it's icon iconography it's uh a painting i mean i can definitely see it i just would love it's a mosaic i would just love her face to be a little bit more stark um everything else julie you nailed it like you did such a great job you should be super proud with these photographs let's go make sure you use that trick that I've showed you guys before, when you're shooting a subject, use the table trick where you give them the feeling, you give them the headspace that they're not pulling back, 
look what happens when you hold a camera and train it at someone. The first thing that people do when you train a camera on them is they, they pull back. They literally, and what it does is it just squishes up everything in here. So watch, I'm going to use this camera when they, I have a beard, so it's hard to see, but when they pull back, it just, it doesn't like extend their neck muscles. So the trick that I tell people to do is to put your chin on a table, like pretend there's a table here and you're putting your chin on a table. And what that does for your head angle is it gives you that head angle that it draws all your lines like downwards and really shapes your face. It makes your face look narrower. So um, you know this trick, Julie. Um, I know when you're shooting on location and you're in a spot that maybe you shouldn't be doing pro shoots in and you have to limited time and all this stuff, like there's lots to think about. Um, this is a very beautiful girl. I think her hair is like kind of better in this one than this one. And this is just about like fixing her bangs here. Do you see how her bangs are coming? And it's just kind of opening up her face here too much. If you look at this photo, her bangs here are a little bit better. And this is closed a little bit more. I would still move her hair forward in order to like shape her face like here the same way kind of on that way so the way that this um camera right is opening i just watch that just um you know small things small things but julie again these kinds of small little nuanced tweaks people who are non-photographers you never notice these kind of details that i show you but this is the difference between um getting paid to make photos and shooting photos for fun your goal is getting paid to make photos so because of that i have to look at your photos with a level of like nuance that most people won't even see all right so guys that is weekly challenges i have some self-directed projects but before that um sam let's look at um before that i have um photos from turtle dev no we're gonna wait i'm gonna come back to photo drop don't let me forget to go to photo drop i'm going to look at um where am i where else am i missing photos it's funny there's too many places to submit photos right now i'm definitely going to um be narrowing the ways that people can send photos because i think i have too many submission places right now it's kind of slowing me down a little bit all right let's look at the photo drop do let me know i'm looking waiting for photos from alexandra i'm sure she's making an account right now we are looking at new photos from turtle turtle is a drone photographer I'm not sure what city you're based in turtle but let's look at some new work from turtle Turtle, as far as the photos that you've taken and submitted to me over the last little bit, this one, although textured and although it has like something, I don't think that there's like enough of that something to really hold anyone's interest. As I said earlier, we look at photos for like literally seconds right so because we look at photos for such a short time we need like a grab point we need a point of interest something to hold us this photo doesn't have i think enough of that stuff this grabs you for a second there's a little there's a little bit of texture here but i think what's missing in this photograph is the overall tack sharpness if you look at this photo at 100 percent oops there's um there's a softness here that i think it kind of exists more like overall although 
it probably seems like it's pretty okay in focus when you're seeing it on stream some of the outer edges just don't have that same snap for me turtle i know the work that you do i know the work that you've done this picture it's not it's not your like best you know what i mean this picture and in contrast now for me this is you as an editor right because this is the same photographer submitting two photographs and one incredibly interesting incredibly grippy it has all the leading line it has a line that's leading me into this super interesting part of the photo it has something leading me back in it has texture it has movement and when you enlarge it although it's snow it's still bright white you look at your color balance between here and here and it's neutral you know what I mean? Like you killed it with this photograph turtle. This is absolutely, absolutely a banger. Let's go. So now I have a choice. I have two photographs to look at this one and this one. What am I going to grab? What am I going to look at? What am I going to look at? You're going to look at this one right now. This becomes the forgettable photo right so become because this is a forgettable photo why include it you know we we need to create the illusion of perfection so we have to be great editors we have to know yes no yes no that that process and as you get more experience shooting as you get more experience shooting and editing you start even getting better because you know the back end you start learning what works in the back end stuff that you freak out about that's my canadian out i you just caught me saying out fuck <laughs> you guys totally just caught me being canadian oh my god out um when you're out making these kinds of photographs it's like you have to pre-edit and know what stuff is like amazing and what stuff is is um just basic <laughs> you know what i mean and then you have to strive more towards this which is fucking amazing and know that when you see a scene like this it's just mm, it's not enough now i've i'm too good for this to catch my interest now you know and it's hard it's hard to pre <laughs> it's hard to pre um edit yourself you know what i mean i knew i was gonna get oot in a boot i knew i was gonna get oot in a boot business um turtle feel good because i know you have the capacity to make really, really high end photos. And Josh, I'm telling you, it's my goal. I'm your coach. I'm your mentor. You know what I mean? So if I was your football coach and I knew that you could run the 40 in this, and then now you're running the 40 in like um, that time plus five seconds, I'm going to be like, Josh, what are you doing, bro? What's happening? And it's visually, it's going to be noticeable that you're slower than you were before, right? So when you share photos with me that are lower than the bar that you've created by sharing work with me, that's better. Once you create that bar for me, so I see the level of your photography, then I'm always going to challenge you to nudge ahead that ahead of that bar. Know that I don't judge any of the photographers who submit against anybody else. Everybody is judged upon their first photo submission. The first photo that you submit after your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth submission, they will always be better than this thing that today you think is your best photo. This is what this whole show is for. I'm trying to help you get better and, how, and help you see photography different that's the whole goal 
We're waiting for our photograph from our new viewer. Where is it at, girl? I hope you've submitted. So, Turtle, that's two photos from you. Where's my uh, mouse? Here it is. We got photos from Dev, and we got photos from Les. Let's go. But we are waiting for photos from Alexandra M. Okay, yo, I hope that was helpful, Turtle, by the way. Um, this photo is a winner. So feel good about what you put out right there, my guy. All right, we have photographers from all over the world. This next photographer that we're looking at, his name is Devon Shu. We call him Dev. He is an Indian-born photographer, currently in photography school in Australia. One of the most profound, like naturally talented shooters that I've come across. Um, Devon Shu makes photos like this. And also, Dev is 21 years old. So photographs from Devon Shu. This is really, really beautiful tonally, Dev. Like, really beautiful. I like this a lot. Let's go. The ink, the 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 just the vibes, the energy with this subject. I want you to watch like head angle i think his head angle is too up and because of the angle that you're shooting him you end up getting i know his neck tattoo is a big part of it but i feel like him leaning back so much in his head up so much ends up giving you like up lighting which is lighting the upper rim of his nose the upper part of his chin and giving him a weird like face shadow because you know it's that light flashlight under the chin kind of lighting the light that's happening literally down here the light that's happening like anywhere from here down is amazing it's just the light that's happening on his face. So you have to counter that with a head angle shift. So this ink, the eye makeup, and what's happening on his forehead is more predominant. I think if his head angle was changed just a bit. The next thing is this here is a little claustrophobic. I would like the distance between the top of his head and the top of the frame to be a little bit greater i'd like his head to kind of end about there when it's in a magazine when it goes in a magazine what happens is it becomes just a little bit claustrophobic although yes i can cut out and put his head in front of the magazine but because you shooting for editorial magazines you shooting for jobs you'll be doing this very very soon sticking to those editorial rules and giving your frames just a little bit more breath know that you can always crop in with the sensors of today if you if this is your whole picture which i know you've also cropped this for me so there may actually be there may be more photo here in the frame because you might have taken off from here because you didn't want to cut from his tattoo, which is understandable. So again, just give your frames just a little bit more space and your head angle here. I would love the head to be off the wall, which would change the light on his um, skin dramatically. Let's look at another. Let's look at another from Dev. That is frame one. This is frame two. This is pretty on the money. I like this a lot, Dev. Let's go. Let's go. The dappled light is perfect. And now look at the same subject with just the right light on his face. When you see it here, I mean, it's definitely a mood. It's definitely a feeling that you're getting here, Dev. And I appreciate that. I understand that, obviously. This photo for me is it. Look at it as a cover. Like, this is a magazine cover. It's 100%, 100% on the button. I like this very, 
very, very much. This is really great. The attitude with him, the clothing, the shoes, the crop, and also it's perspective month. I really like these leading lines um, on the ground, how this light pushes in the dappling of the sun and this cross light, but you managing to have really beautiful like shadow light on him the exposure on his clothes is really good um his outfit it just looks good you know and shooting clothing is super hard so you should be very very happy with this you should be very happy with this deb this looks amazing All right, let's look at something else, shall we? From Devon Shu, Dev, this is killing it, killing it. This is really good, really good. It's another image from Dev, very strong, very strong. It's two, two small things. Um, I'm gonna remind again, the headspace is stressing me. So know that you can get this feeling with a little bit more room here i just need a little bit more room if your tendency for your verticals every vert is a cover i want you to remember every vert is a cover and because of that every vert you have to think about the masthead and i mean in this case this ca actually works like i can't lie like it actually works with his head up there just because of where his eyes are placed, it works. Um, but if we had more space and the art director chose to crop it down like that, that works too. You know what I mean? I just want you to give your clients the freedom to be able to move like up and down a little bit more and decide how far down where they crop here and where they crop here. So if you just back up and give them just a little bit more space, that's all I'm saying. Next is exposure. Exposure here against the nose and in here is too hot. I think that it needs to come down probably by a third of a stop would be good, possibly even a half a stop. You can also just dodge this area or burn this area. I know you don't want to lose detail in the fabric here. I know you don't want to lose detail here. So you have to selectively um, darken this area. Overall, Dev, this is my favorite photo so far from this collection you're sharing. Let's see another. Wow, dude. Wow. This is hot, dude. Again, really great photography, really strong takes, you know, like you can see Dev naturally makes statement photographs. This is a strong statement photograph. I hope you guys agree. This is like the light on this. He's, this is complicated light. This is Rembrandt lighting, but from the rear. So basically he has this pocket. He has this amazing pocket of light here. He has a nice rim, but if he hit it from this way, it would be side light with that beautiful pocket of highlight here on the eye, but he's hitting it from the side with this same Rembrandt lighting this way. There's no haze. There's no flare. It's just executed really well. Again, your highlights are a little hot. Um, this is probably plus two thirds. So figure out a way to make sure that this light that's coming here and when you're trying to do a rim, it needs to be plus a third, a third of a stop in order to get this rim and still have detail. If you want detail in the highlights, you need it to be plus a third. This is secret time. Plus one third shows detail here. 
where that highlight here, this is plus one or it's plus one to two stops over. And because of that, now even non-Caucasian skin, once you overexpose it by a stop, um, it's gone, it's white. So in order to hold your highlights, make sure that they're somewhere in between a third and a half a stop, then you'll hold highlights. But no, if you want your rim to be white, then make it one stop over. That's what you're doing here, Dev. As soon as you dial this nuance to where, I'm gonna show you an example. As soon as you dial this nuance to be like, to be thirds of stops rather than um rather than like blowing like then a full stop then you can start um dealing with this kind of nuance which i want to tell you this is nuance right like where i have white and white and there's nuance in the white on white this is why? Because fabrics, if you don't nail those thirds and you try to hit that rear light at like a stop plus, and this is what a light meter is for. People are thinking that they can do this kind of nuanced light without a light meter. Come on. Like the light meter is how when you have, I'm trying to find another example. When you have a complicated nuanced lighting setup, look at my rears. Look at this. This is plus a third. This is why this highlight doesn't burn out. Look at the highlight on his ear and here. It's plus a third. This is why this doesn't burn out. This is why you have detail in his hair. This is why there's a highlight on the edge of his suit, but it's not white. It's nuanced. It's because my, my highlights are at thirds. Do you know what I mean? So that's, um, it's super important to know like these, cause this is such, it took me two hours to light this. Like it's so nuanced. I lit this for two hours. So that kind of um, vibe comes from thirds. Let's look at another from Devon Shu. Again, I love it though. It's so good. That's Dev's last photo. Um, I think of everything that you submitted and they're all really powerful. But if I had to choose from these four, geez, Louise, why you make it so hard, bro? Why you make it so hard? If I had to choose from those four, Dev, I'm going to call this your best photo. This is um, really great. I'm really, really happy with this. It's fantastic. Let's go. Learn that um learn that third trick. Um make sure that you don't let your highlights burn out. Whoever's watching, this is just stuff to know um when you're shooting in studio or when you're shooting not in studio. If you want your highlights to show up and not burn out, they can't be brighter than a third of a stop more than what your normal is. Wherever your exposure is, if you want something to appear as a highlight, it has to be brighter than your exposure. So if you're shooting something at F8, um, if you're shooting something at F8, then your highlights, um, which in this case is here, your highs have to be plus a third in order to appear different than your main light. If your rear highlight is also F8, F8, F8 
equals no highlight. You've just canceled it if it's both at the same reading. The only way that you get a highlight is if this is brighter than the exposure that you're shooting at. So the importance of a light meter, people hacking at it in studio, saying that they memorize settings or that they like the, the nuance that's needed and the technical ability that's needed in order to shoot under artificial light is not, if you wing it, you will be hacking at it for a lifetime or you learn how to do it right properly. Like it's really about seeing light. Clearly Devon Shu sees light. He understands light. He understands placement. What I'm trying to help him with is exposure. I know Dev doesn't have a light meter and not having a light meter is the reason like once he gets a light meter, there's technical mistakes as far as range. The other issue with this photo, it's not an issue. It's just a technical thing that you're coming up against. The exposure here versus the exposure here is like a 12 stop difference. Do you know what I mean? It's like down here would be like, like imagine F1. And then this highlight is like F16. So the range between the, the shadow and the highlight is so great that our cameras can't handle that range. Cameras have like a seven, nine stop tonal range at best. So anytime that you can narrow the tonal range of your photo through contrast and lighting, um, after you can, you can bring that tonal range back. But if it's super contrasty, it's impossible to, to salvage an over contrasty photo. So anyways, I hope that helps Devin Shu. I hope that helps. That's a little bit of a photo review from Devon Shu. Let's go, my guy. Thank you for submitting. My older brother, Les, is a painter and has been my biggest inspiration since I was a pup. Les also watches this show. You'll see him right there in chat. And he has submitted some photos of Sequoia, the big red dog. My brother is a painter, an artist. He often uses photographs as reference for his paintings. Um, he submitted some photographs of Sequoia, the big red dog. Um, dude, this is cute. This is cute. It's a great shot. I mean, I'm not sure if you shot this with your pro camera, if you shot this with your phone. I think you shot this with your Canon based on the framing. It's good cover composition less. I like how like the nose is the main focus point and everything else goes out of focus. That's great. I feel like the way that you cut here, it's a bit claustrophobically close and the ears. Um, I think maybe a little bit of a backup if the talk was a little bit further back, but as far as like this shape is just great, how it leads you this out of focus depth of field here leads you into the photo. I really like that. I feel like it just, it's just cropped just a little bit tight. We have to kind of watch where we clip when we're shooting. Um, and also this is tricky because the dog pulls this way as far as the shape, like the rest of the dog pulls this way. So you ask yourself, is this a horizontal picture where you shoot it horizontal and you drop the dog's snout here and then you have the dog's body go through the frame? Like that's kind of also another way to compose it. Um, we always have to ask ourselves, is this a horizontal or a vertical picture when we're shooting? That's Les's first submission. Let's look at the second. Did it, but oh dude, great. Again, he did a horizontal composition here. You can see how the ears now are, we see the ears. It may, this is such a big dog now, like you're getting the ears and that crop is great. This is great, dude. 
This is, again, I think way stronger than the first one. I love what's happening on this side of the frame. This is like 100% great. The paw being cropped, um, I wish we could pull his paw and put it like under his chin. Um, but again, bears can't be choosers. Um, he's got a little bit of uh, sequoia snot on, or ice snot on the top of his thing. Um, also, the other thing to try would be focusing on the eyes and letting the snout go out of focus. I know that you're shooting this up with a 50, so it's a really shallow depth of field. But again, Les, I like this. This is my favorite so far. My favorite so far from Bretta Less. And then the third photo. This these are this would be great for paintings, bro. I can definitely see that. And you can see in this one, like you're kind of really getting your stride as far as the composition. This is super strong. Super strong. He's got a um she's got her harness on, um, getting a little close with the ear to the edge of the frame. Um, you can see here what it looks like when you give me just a little bit more room. Um, my favorite photo brother exists in between these two. <laughs> it exists somewhere in here and it's kind of tricky when you do too many variations in between frames. If one frames from here and then the next frames from here, that first frame in that area, you scan the frame and see like, oh dude, my brother says she's 185 pounds. This dog weighs the same as me. That's unbelievable. So I'm sure it's difficult. I'm sure it's difficult um, to capture it, but I think you did a really fantastic job, Les. Like this is really dope. You should be really happy. This is great. And I hope you paint. Let's um, go. Hope you make a painting of this. Another thing to try would be, is there a way to get Sequoia on like a blanket or something that's like, with no pattern, like something monochromatic. And then I think you could do like a really great painting of her on like a, a monochromatic background. This is great, dude. Thanks for submitting. Photos from big brother, Leslie. Let's go. If I had to pick a favorite, bro, it's photo two. This is my favorite. I think this one here is your best. Good shit. Thanks for submitting, my guy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Let's look at some more photos. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this content, please consider dropping it a like. Likes are free. All you got to do is, is subscribing is free here too. All you got to do is hit the subscribe button. Boop, boop. Hit the subscribe button. We lost um, our girl uh, who was submitting some photos. Her name was, where did she go? Where'd she go? Um, Alexandra M. Did Alexandra M make it to submit some photos? Do I have any more photos to look at? Alexandra M made it to the Discord, I can see, but we are just waiting for some photos to go into the MVTP photo drop. I'm going to consolidate a bunch of these. Uh, I, w I don't know if I can merge, but I need to archive some of these folders because there's too many places for people to submit photos, you know? Guys, are there photos that I've missed? Is anybody watching that has yet to submit photographs? If you guys have questions that you want to ask me, I'm definitely here waiting for questions, standing by for some more submissions if that is going to happen. In the meantime, I'm just going to, you know, pop some smoke <laughs> are you here alexandra are we waiting for photos from you let me know hope you guys feel um sam that's where they are sam thank you i couldn't find them see once i click it then it unhighlights and it marks it as red and then i forget which which one it is thank you sam i knew there was another set of photographs i hadn't seen one of my viewers, his name is Sam McRae. Sam lives in beautiful British Columbia, Canada, in the mountains, somewhere on the border between Alberta and Canada. Sam makes incredible landscape photographs. Incredible. And he also often shoots them on a large format camera, like 
four by five. So let's look at some new submissions from Sam McRae. Sam, this is so good and so textured. I really feel like this is a four by five image. This is so good. Really, really happy with your commitment to shooting large format. This is so, so great. I really love the composition that's happening with these mountains. This depth, the ridges, these triangles, everything is just holding you in the photograph longer. The way that you're using these trees is sort of like a Sam-ism. I'm gonna call this like a bit of a Sam-ism. This is something that you've been doing compositionally now for like a good while, Sam. And I'm actually really feeling it and starting to call it like a style thing for you, which I think is really working. You can see, and what I'm talking about is Sam usually uses trees as a frame and he shoots through the trees and uses that frame to compose. So it's really well done. I like it a lot. The water is great, which you can see is just starting to freeze. The tree line, we have good detail in here and good detail in here. And the leading line, the leading line of the shore, the leading line of the mountains, everything just holds you in here, Sam, for a good minute. It's a great photo. Let's go. It's a great photo. You should be very happy. All right, let's look at another. By the way, guys, that's Sam McRae all the way from beautiful British Columbia. Sam is also working on a self-directed project, which is, um, I don't know what he calls it, but it's just trees. <laughs> and this is one of Sam's submissions today. Look at Sam's photo as a cover. And you can see like Sam makes cover photos, right? Like that he makes hero photos of nature and it and i i encouraged him to start a self-directed project and i believe that self-directed project is on um trees called trees i'd like to help you edit that sam i really would um you're probably starting to get a really good body of work together i'd really love to help you take that to the next level perhaps make it a book or something like that, you might need an editor. I'm happy to look at it if you need some help. It's a great Sam. This this is um very strong. Very strong. If I didn't um give you a let's go. Let's go. We'll just give you some big love. How about that? Super, super dope, Sam. You should be very happy with that flick. All right. All right. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start with another cloud moonshot it's so funny this is almost unexpected from sam but this fingernail moon is really great and super super sharp this is just a pleasing frameable photo it's def oh i got an arrow there it's definitely frameable that says frameable um for sure frameable this is great the little vibe with it. this is a series i feel like you should do a series on the sky and this when there's like 8 to 25 of these i think would be really great um if you could incorporate the moon into all of those photos and some sort of interesting light there's something there there's something there seeing it as a solo um i almost like want to see more of a series, Sam, but again, very great. You should be very happy, very happy with that. Very happy. All right, let's see if there's more from Sam. I think that that's it from Sam. Sam, you're making it very difficult for me to pick just one. You're making it very difficult for me to pick one favorite because they're all very different. Um, but I think if I had to pick one favorite, it would be this one because of the technical perfection. It's just perfect, technically. You know what I mean? I can't lie. 
it's perfect um technically turtle i looked at your photos already i gave you shit for submitting one because it is not up to par i gave you kudos for the second one because it is um and i talked a little bit about you and editing and learning which comes from experience what is amazing and what is average it's hard because your average is better than most people's photography but your average isn't at par with your excellence and your quality that you've done before so just you dropping underneath your bar whenever it happens i'm going to see it so <laughs> that's what i talked about make sure that you watch this video back um okay all right no worries turtle no worries so guys tell me um uh, it looks like bear thunder might have a photo for me he says hold on a sec so i am holding on a sec I am here for questions, comments, love. If you guys want to donate to the stream, you guys can make a $1 tip <laughs> or more if you feel like it. But all you need to do is type command tip in chat. It'll teach you how to do that pretty quickly. Um, also, you can support the stream by wearing merch, buying merch. Like, are you seeing... The outfit that I got on right now. Are you seeing the swag? I only wear my own clothes, by the way, now. It's, I just wear my own clothes. So you can support by picking up something from the merch store. It's all apparel for creatives and photographers like you to get into. Obviously, I'm not monetized yet. So there's no super chats. So if you learned something, um, you can drop a dollar or two. Um, but obviously that's not necessary for you to do that at all. This is free content. Um, just watch my videos. That's how you guys can help. Watch my videos, make comments, hit likes, share with your friends, all of that. Um, ethos will make it so I'm a partner in no time. It is absolutely not necessary at all for you to tip. Um, but it's appreciated if you feel like it, definitely. So um, as we are waiting, I think, for some photos, we have something coming into the photo drop. We got photos from one more photo from my brother, Les, just to give you a scale as to the size of my brother's puppy. There's my brother's daughter, Fove, with Sequoia, just to give you a sense of scale. This dog is mental. That's a lap dog, eh, Les? That's what you're trying to say, buddy? <laughs> Good shit, bro. Good shit. Um, okay, let me find Bear Thunder. Bear Thunder submitted some more. Bear Thunder submitted some more. Bear shoots macros. And Bear's macros are on a level that you've never seen macros like this before. They are actually incredibly detailed. And to show you the scale, this is one of Bear's macro images. This is one millimeter. And this is the photographs that Bear makes of a grain of sand. This is a grain of sand. Try to wrap your head around this. One grain of sand. Crazy. A millimeter, it's absolutely, absolutely mental. So great. So great. So great, Bear. Like, holy shit. Let's go. Bear Thunder has been working on this project of macros for over two years. And... I mean, he's taken this to a, a national geographic level. Um, he's, Bear, you're doing amazing things. I, I want you to be encouraged to, I want to encourage you to start submitting. I really want you to develop a portfolio, a book of this. People would buy this as a book, Bear. You should be very proud of it. Very proud. Very, very great. Phenomenal is a great word, Ray. 
Ray called it phenomenal, Bear Thunder. And some other pieces of sand. Look at how Bear arranges them. They're, it's done so well. I'm going to hide my camera for full effect. Look at this. It's just, and again, look at how big these files are. So you can really look at every grain of sand and know the distance, like seeing his millimeter distance here, you can get the size, like these are less than a millimeter. Look at that one. That's so great. So amazing. This is new work from Bear Thunder. Let's go. Should be very proud of this bear. This is, I mean, this picture here, this photo here, bear. It's crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Should be very, very, very happy. Just unbelievable work from Bear Thunder. Unbelievable bear. You get smoke in real life because you brought the smoke today. Wow. Guys, unbelievable photography submitted from all over the world, from Europe, from Australia, from Canada. Um, very proud of you guys. You guys impressed me with the photography that you share. One last photo from Turtle. Turtle, this is what I expect from you. If you submit anything less than what you're capable of like this photo right here i'm going to call you out this picture needs a little bit of contrast adjustment we're going to bring this down here into the blacks a little bit and we're going to make it feel i i want this raw photo because i will bring out the best out of this raw photo i'm going to teach you how so you can do it too the tonal variation from here to here, how this is light, we want this down here to go almost black. And then we're gonna push the color of these, this tower into almost white without losing detail. This is everything. I'm really, really feeling this picture. You can see you could have given it a bit more headroom um, because down here is inconsequential. You could have cropped it here, but up here, I want it to be kind of pushed down just a touch. You could also play with the angles. So this sits instead of straight up and down, and you can see it's kind of already skewed because of the wide angle. It's distorting it and making it twist that way. So you could also um, force it into the corners for even more of an extreme cross composition, you know? Great shot, great shot though. So far, this is the best one of the day. I would love to have the raw so I could process this um, live. And yes, it very much looks like it's over water. What I was speaking about is just helping him get a nicer tonal range from what's happening up here and then push down into this bottom corner make this darker down here. This is a crazy photo turtle. Really crazy. Again, the best that you submitted today. The best. Your best photo of the day. And one photo. Um, you, you, just, you just have to edit yourself better. Be harder on yourself as far as what's good and what's average. And it takes time. It takes time. Guys, everybody who submitted today, thank you. You guys did all amazing. Everybody who put work in today, good shit. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. Uh, hope you guys like today's episode. Today we talked all about perspective. I hope you guys are feeling it. You know me, I'm your friendly neighborhood photographer. I do these streams every Sunday. You'll find me here for Behind the Picture. I start always at 2 p.m. I usually have a guest, not usually, sometimes I have a guest. Sometimes I have a special guest and they're usually photographers, art directors, marketing people. I bring them in to help you guys get to that next level. So expect a new interview with Mingus coming up. And also I have some guests planned later on this month. I have guests planned into March. So excited guests are going to be a big part of Sunday's show. 
Tuesday, Thursday, I do Ask a Photo Pro. Ask a Photo Pro, a little bit more informal. I could spend more time talking with you, more time looking at the photography that you guys create. And again, it's all about helping you level up to the next level with your photos. If you guys have found me from Instagram, thank you. If you're still here watching, I don't know how you would be, but if you're still here watching me from Instagram, you pretty much watched a whole episode without seeing any visuals. So um, if you are watching me on Instagram, please consider subscribing to my YouTube because it's better. And that's it. Um, you guys know me. I'm Cardi, your friendly neighborhood photographer. I will be back Tuesday with some more fine content. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you feel like it. If not, that's all right too. I love you lots. Thanks.